two men take a stroll down a quiet back street in Yangon. This unassuming scene is the culmination of more than 500 days of international pressure on the government of Myanmar. Hua <laughs> Lon and Cho So U are free, reunited with their families. While he was in jail, Hua Lon's wife gave birth. Today, a first proper tentative meeting between father and daughter. It was an investigation into a massacre that led to their imprisonment. The work was forensic and detailed. On September the 2nd, 2017, in the village of In Din, 10 men, Rohingya Muslims in predominantly Buddhist Myanmar, were rounded up by the Burmese military. Bound together, they watched as their neighbors dug a shallow grave. Then they were killed. Two of them hacked to death by local villagers, the others shot by soldiers. Their work was extremely important. Uh, the most important thing I think that the Reuters journalists accomplished was to provide uh, photographic evidence uh, as well as first-hand evidence of eyewitnesses of the events. Um, we ourselves were able to uh, speak to eyewitnesses as well, so uh, we were able to corroborate what they found. The massacre was one of many. The Burmese military said they went in to quash attacks by what they called Islamist terrorists. The United Nations described it as a textbook example of ethnic cleansing. It was a brutal campaign of arson, rape and killing of civilians, as Newsnight found when we travelled to meet survivors who'd fled to Bangladesh. <laughs> Thousands of people were killed, including at least 730 children under the age of five, according to the medical charity Médecins Sans Frontières. The Burmese military was guilty of war crimes, even genocide, an investigation by the UN alleged but what of Aung San Suu Kyi, the Nobel Peace Prize laureate, who's now Myanmar's de facto civilian leader? The man who headed the investigation told us she must take some of the responsibility. We certainly found that she had contributed to the events in uh, Rakhine State after the worst part of the military's actions by covering up for the military, uh, finding excuses for them, denying what had happened. And certainly moral responsibility for that rests firmly on her shoulders. Whoever bears responsibility, if their aim was to drive the Rohingya out of Myanmar, then they were largely successful. More than 700,000 of them fled, most of them to those camps in Bangladesh, where they remain to this day. I spoke to one contact there this evening who said that the situation there was now so tense he didn't want to appear on screen. But he also said that no one there was contemplating a return to Myanmar while no one was being held accountable. The British government today seemed optimistic that the release of the two journalists might signal a bigger shift. I hope it can be the start of a new chapter in our relations with Myanmar if following this we can also have the same kind of openness about the issues in Rakhine province. But Myanmar has powerful backers, China, Russia, at the UN Security Council, and human rights officials have not been allowed to conduct their investigations on the ground. The Myanmar authorities, whether it's the civilian government or it was the previous military, military junta, have a history of uh, releasing political detainees um, to offset international pressure. Um, the release of Walon and Chosa U, while it is so welcome for these two men and their families, fits very much within this pattern of trying to appease international pressure and deflect attention. An injustice was redressed today, a small but significant gesture. Could this be the beginning of real change? Or will international pressure now abate, leaving hundreds of thousands of Rohingya Muslims in stateless limbo?